Hey everyone, today we're going to have a look at the ML play or the 33 peel play, but a cool way that your team might be able to defend it. So we've just seen the first 33 peel there was a successful one. Uh, they ran onto the ball, beat the toucher, and picked the right option. So we've seen this play actually a few times on the channel just because it's very impressive. So let's have a look at a, a, a couple of um, 33 peels that have been defended. All right, so just basically, just in case you haven't seen a 33 peel, two middles playing the ball. This link's going to be running onto it. This player's gonna pull corner, split, hit short side, link runs onto the ball, middle gets around. It's basically like a short side rooster. And the reason it's called 33 peel is two middles in uh, New Zealand terminology is threes with your links as two. So it's a 33 ruck peeling around the two. ML comes from the fact that it used to be called MML, but it was just awkward to say, so they shortened it to ML, like a true Australian way we just shorten everything. All right, so here's the little wraparound. And you can have a look here. All right, so as this player here started to pull corner, the link has shot up. All right, not necessarily to shoot up and make this touch, but if you get up nice and fast before this player here can wrap around fully, what you're doing is you're cutting this angle off for the ball carrier. Because now, like if this player can't just magically teleport out here and be the extra man. So while that time is used of him trying to run around and get there, you shoot up, you hold here, and then once sort of you've held a little bit and allowed this player to pull direct or back straight, then you can move out as this player wraps around. So you're not necessarily, well obviously if you can, if this guy's still behind and he's lazy sweeping around, yeah, you can go and pinch that touch. But once he's coming around, that's when you move out of the way. And all you've done is you force the ball carrier to go back into that middle, which allows everyone to play man on. All right, so when they play man on here, it's nice footwork by New Zealand, but Australia are, are able to defend it. Let's have a look at another example. Here's the ML, look at the link fly up. And you can see he's flown up here, but he's always remembered that this is his man. So essentially he's just rendered all this field unusable. He's cut that, cut that field off. All right, the only thing they can do there is throw the ball to the winger who's got a, a winger marked anyway. So now he's allowed his middle to recover and watch the middle now, everyone just goes man on. All right, so it's just very important that you're not flying up and flying in too far to make this touch because if he flies all the way in and tries to commit to that touch, they just do a little blind pop over the top and all of a sudden it's two on one. So he flies up, okay, but all he's, priority, uh, he's prioritized that wrapping around player. And he's forced, so you're essentially forcing him back to the open side into man on. Um, but worst case scenario, let's say this player still is beaten you will still be able to defend it more often than not because what you've done is you've cut all this field off and made the sh ah, sorry and made the open side really tight and these holes when there's a really tight open side are squeezed and nice and compressed so it's very harder to hit a hole and a lot easier to defend because the gaps are a lot um, more narrow let's have a look at another example but yeah that's just man on and this is if you have not so much a lazy wraparound play, but if they're not getting there too fast, you can see it comes up and they try to go for it, he takes the pass. A bit more risky, this one. But let's say he doesn't, he doesn't throw that. You can see that this player would be able to recover and make that touch and just push all the other guys out. All right, but this one, he gets up in the channel. They try that little pass, but because he shot up and read the play really well, he was able to pick that pass off. Now it's good practice to step off the line here, because even if they don't give it as an ML, if you step up and get present here, and always make sure that you've got your eye on whoever that ends up playing link, even if they do a middle middle and take off from dummy half, you're forcing them back into that open side which is now only half the field because all of this side, 
they can't use. Unless they just try to run around you or try to um, beat you with talent, they're not going to beat you with structure. So you've shot up, you've cut the play to go only back that side. Okay, because they're not going to throw the ball over top of you because the ball's in the air for too long. Everyone can just sort of reset themselves. And I don't think I have another example. The rest of the video is this player running the length of the field. But that is one way. There's, oh, there's, look, there's different ways you can defend an ML. There's ways that you can completely destroy the ML before um, the touch is even made. But this is just a what I, in my opinion, see as the most basic way to get your links off that line um, and defending the ML or the 33P. Oh, sorry, I should... To be honest, I probably prefer the, the New Zealand terminology. It's actually a lot easier. I wish I learned that way. But thanks for watching, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed this video and we'll be back soon for another one. Don't know which one it's going to be because I record about a bunch at a time. But thanks. Don't forget to subscribe.